Hello everyone, Mr. K here again. <clears throat> We're talking about uh, engine internals today. So kind of digging deep inside the engine and making sure we can ID all the main parts. All right. So we're going to show the main internal parts of the engine, uh, discuss various, various configurations of internals, and why certain designs are used. We're going to talk about that too. So at this point in time, go ahead and stop my video and watch this one. OK, you should have just watch that video. This should have given you a good overview of different parts of the engine and systems. So let's move on. Engine blocks, first thing I want to <clears throat> talk about and, and split this into. So engine block is going to contain everything. It's going to hold it all together and it's kind of like the heart of the engine. It's the biggest chunk of iron or aluminum uh, in the modern engine. Pistons. Remember from the video, the pistons go up and down. Uh, that is what transfers the, turns the, I guess, heat energy and expansion into reciprocating motion, which would then connect to the crankshaft. Okay, uh, the, underneath the piston is typically gonna be oil and, uh, that's sloshing around or oil mist and above it's gonna be the, uh, the gasoline, the fire, the air, that type of thing. Cylinder head, it's gonna hold your valves and valve springs and keepers. Uh, sometimes it's gonna hold camshafts and it is bolted to the top of the engine block. It's gonna seal a combustion chamber and it's gonna allow air and fuel in and exhaust gases out. Crankshaft. Okay, again, it's gonna convert that reciprocating motion of the pistons and uh, connecting rods into rotational motion so that it can connect out to the uh, transmission and eventually spin your wheels. And it also carries oil around the engine. So you'll see these uh, little holes. So oil is pumped in through one of these main bearings and it is uh, circulated, or I guess multiple of the main bearings then it's circulated out to these rod bearings, rod journals. Camshafts. Okay, now we're getting a little more uh, complex or high tech, I should say. So it uses the rotational motion of the crankshaft to open the valves. The camshaft is driven by the crankshaft, not the other way around. And the camshaft is going to open these valves in the engine at the perfect time so that the air and fuel can flow in for, remember the first stroke is the intake stroke. Okay, the different layouts or configurations. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about just the layout of the, uh, the pistons. What you're looking at here is a V8. Notice you've got the connecting rods and pistons are kind of aligned in a V shape, just like this engine on the right. This is your standard <clears throat> Chevy 350, Ford 400, Dodge uh, 318, 360, just your, your standard engines made from oh, about 19, 55 or so up through 1996. Uh, long, long time. The V8 engine, probably the most common in the world. Of course, you can't say V8 without V6. Same thing. It's just six cylinders instead of eight. Okay, same thing. They're arranged in a V format. Um, while we're talking about that, let's talk about how do we know for a fact, how can we tell whether an engine's a V8, a V4, a V10, a V12, V16, whatever it may be. Okay, the, uh, probably the, the quickest, easiest way, I'd say the most uh, idiot-proof method is count the spark plugs or the spark plug wires or the coil packs. So notice one, two, three coil packs times two makes six. So that's a V6. Okay, <clears throat> there's also a straight six. Take a look at take a look at that. All the pistons are in a row, and that's what it's going to look like outside the engine. Okay, um, straight sixes are uh, they're not real popular anymore. They were for quite a while, from probably about again the 50s through the 80s. 
Uh, they kind of faded away, uh, have some design issues, but uh, mainly packaging, which is a fancy way of saying they don't fit well in cars because they're so long and tall that it's hard to get them to fit under the hood of like a sports car. So they were, they were more truck engines for a while. Uh, the most recent example I can think of is GMC Envoys used them in the early mid 2000s. Uh, Chevy Canyons used them, um, but otherwise they, they, they're not super popular. They're just kind of a, a weird shaped engine. They're hard to fit under the hood of a small car. <clears throat> okay, if you want to figure out whether it's a straight six or a V6 or a straight six is also called an inline six. Uh, just look at it. Look at the shape of the motor. Look at your spark plugs all lined up in a row. Look at your coil packs all lined up in a row. That's a straight six, not a V6. But there's also opposed six or O sixes. Okay. Some people call these flat sixes, but I, I would caution you on calling them that because people may get you. If you call it a flat six, people are going to think they're talking about a flathead six from like the 40s. Um, but this is an opposed, okay, the pistons go in opposing directions, opposed six. Um, these are good in crunch down sports cars. They're used in airplanes because uh, they can crunch down the nose of the aircraft, make it more aerodynamic. Okay, Lycoming is an aircraft engine supplier. Subarus use these and Porsche and probably more, but those are the ones that I know of. So opposed six. How about camshaft? Let's talk about, we talked about uh, piston configurations. Let's talk about camshaft configurations, okay? Again, your standard Chevy Ford Dodge V8 from, for you know, the 50 years that they were mass produced, those are all gonna be central cam, typically gonna be central cam or internal cam or push rod engines. So the camshaft is buried inside the engine. See, take a look at this diagram. This would be a central cam or a push rod engine um, four cylinder, but notice or over overhead valve, because uh, you can't call an overhead cam, it's overhead valve engine. Notice the camshafts down here, okay? So these engines um, were mass produced, like I said, for a long, long time, uh, cheap to produce, relatively reliable, but there's some moving parts here that eventually caused their, their downfall. The camshaft is so far away from the valves, you gotta run a push rod all the way up here with a rocker arm over, and then you can open close the valve with the camshaft. So that was a, I guess, a fatal flaw that eventually um, turned these things off in the automotive industry, because it was just, it's more stuff to break, it's more stuff that drags down the engine, uh, lower fuel mileage, et cetera. So then they went to, <clears throat> He said, what a great idea. Let's put the camshaft right on top of the cylinder head so we can just push right on the valves and we can get rid of those push rods. They call that a single overhead cam or SOHC engine. Okay, one cam per cylinder head. Uh, and the idea works fine. Uh, it saves a little bit of fuel mileage, gets you a little more power. And uh, the downside though, is you start getting all these wacky timing chains going all over the motor. Okay, so again, more complexity. And double overhead cam. Okay, notice two camshafts per um, cylinder head. So if you get two cams, then you can add more valves. <clears throat> so here's a four cylinder, and instead of having eight valves, it's got 16 valves. And they can do that because there's two cams. This is considered higher performance. Um, they call it better breathing engine because you've got more valves. Uh, and if a supplier or a manufacturer is gonna make a double overhead cam, they're gonna brag about it because it's a selling point. So here's Honda's way, they call it, they've got it right on their valve cover. <clears throat> here's Suzuki, twin cam, okay, Mitsubishi, double overhead cam, 16 valve. Uh, double or head cam 16 valve Mazda. Okay, so just showing you some examples here. That if they've got double overhead cams, they're going to brag about it. So let's recap. So remember, designs vary based on a lot of things, but a lot of it's uh, cost, efficiency, 
marketing packaging will it fit under the hood of a small car etc that's why they make different types of engines different configurations okay remember there's central cam aka push rod engines also called overhead valve engines single overhead cam double overhead cam okay there's your there's your camshaft options for uh, piston configurations you've got v6 straight six opposed six right and there you go and on to your assignment to complete so that about sums it up for engine uh, internals and configurations for now and have a good day